Assalamualaikum and hello to all. Today we are going to study chapter 8 which is about chemical equilibrium. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain what is a reversible reaction, state the characteristic of dynamic equilibrium, and interpret the curve of concentration of reactant and product against time. Okay, so what is reversible reaction? Okay, reversible reaction is the chemical reaction which takes place in both forward and reverse reaction. Okay, for example, if we have uh, N2 gas reacted with 3H2 gas. Okay, the arrow here is shown like this. Okay, reversible. Let me draw again. Reversible. Okay, like this. To become 2 and H3 gas ammonia. So this reaction is reversible because the reaction takes place both forward from left to right and also from right to left. Uh, the product can become the reactant and the reactant can become the product. So this is reversible shown by the arrow here. The arrow here shows that this is reversible reaction. <coughs> okay, not all reaction uh, is reversible. Uh, for example, carbon, solid, you burn with excess oxygen, okay, excess oxygen. Uh, this is non-reversible lah, because what you, you get is CO2. Uh, CO2 does not become uh, O2 again or carbon. For example, you burn paper, a piece of paper. When you burn a piece of paper, what happens is the paper will become black, but you cannot change the dark paper, the black paper into white again. Uh, that is non-reversible. So, that's the difference lah. Okay, dynamic equilibrium. Okay, dynamic equilibrium is a state of chemical equilibrium where both of forward rate, forward and reverse reaction proceed at equal rate. Okay, this is being highlighted because this is important. Eh? The rate is equal. Okay, proceed at equal rate, both forward and reverse reaction. Uh, what are the characteristic? Okay, rate forward equal to the rate reverse. Eh? What are the characteristic? So this is also important, the characteristic of system at equilibrium, at dynamic equilibrium. Okay, the dynamic here means that this is not static. Dynamic, something is moving. Okay, something is moving, something is happening. What we can see, the characteristic, even though this is dynamic, even though this is not static, the concentration of reactant and product are constant over time. It is constant, it stays constant. Rate of forward equal to the rate of reverse reaction. And the reaction quotient Q is equal to K. Okay, K is equilibrium constant means that the value of K is always at equilibrium. Okay, always at equilibrium. Uh, remember, equilibrium can only occur in closed system. Okay, this is also important uh, because if you have open system, uh, the system will, the reactant will release to the surrounding eh? okay there is a law of mass action that you need to know okay when we are looking for the relationship between reactor product ratio and constant value at constant temperature and for, for a reaction at equilibrium okay it is being presented by this formula okay by this formula Okay, and law of mass as law of mass action is to explain the relationship between reactant and product at equilibrium. Okay, for example, uh, let us take the example with nitrogen earlier. Okay, and two gas plus three H two gas uh, forming. Okay, this is reversible. Uh, two and H three gas. Okay, so if we want to follow this formula. Okay, at equilibrium, so at equilibrium, K is equal to, okay, K is actually the concentration of product over concentration of reactant. Okay, concentration of product over concentration of reactant. So, what is the product? The product is this one, eh? okay, and raised by the power of its stoichiometry, okay, 2 NH3. So, it means that the concentration of product is NH3 raised by the power of 2 okay so the same thing for this one eh? a b c d uh, you can see that a b c d here refers to stoichiometry this is stoichiometry yeah okay stoichiometry so product of reactant k product this is product 
product raised by the power of its stoichiometry. So the same thing for D raised by the stoichiometry. Okay, so let's proceed to this one. Okay, so the reactant is NH2, uh, N2, and H2. Uh. So N2, this is only one, so you don't have to write down one. And hydrogen is two. So this one will become three. Okay, what happened? Okay, so three. Uh, so this is the K. Uh, let me just write down again to make it clear. And H3 raised by the power of its stoichiometry over N2 raised by the power of 1. But we don't have to write down because it is 1. And hydrogen raised by the power of 3. Okay, so this is the law of the mass action that we write down. Eh? Okay, now we want to see the concentration versus time. What happened? <clears throat> okay, so this is concentration. Okay, let's let's just put a number here. Let's say this is 2. Let's say this is 4. So, K, as you know, K always refer to product over reactant. Okay, product over reactant. So, this is the product. This is the reactant. Okay, so it means that this is concentration of B over concentration of A. Uh, why is it like this? Because concentration of product over concentration of reactant uh, raised by the power of its stoichiometry. This one, A, B is 1, 1. Eh? So when it is 1, 1, you don't have to write down. Eh? Okay, so K here, if we replace the value, okay, B here is 4. And the value of A is 2. So 4 over 2 is Okay, so A refers to all the values, all the values here, all the values of concentration of B, all the values of the concentration of A, okay, after it reach equilibrium, okay, the the constant line here show that it, it reach equilibrium, okay, after T1, after T1, okay, after T1, all the time above this T1 is a time at equilibrium, means it reach equilibrium. But before that, before that, okay, let's say we take this point. Okay, let's say we take this point. Okay, this is not equilibrium. So when it is not equilibrium, we are not going to represent the value with K. We are going to present the value with Q. Okay, Q, Q, it can be at three position. Whether before equilibrium, okay, Q can also be at equilibrium and Q can also be after equilibrium means maybe the reaction is being disturbed okay so let's take the value here maybe this is 2.3 and this one is 3.7 okay okay so, so you can see that k is actually 2 okay k is actually 2 so if we try to calculate at let's say this is t 0.3 okay let's say t 0.3 uh, 0 0.3 is just a time, eh? just time, M maybe 0 0.3 seconds. So Q now, when you are going to calculate Q, this, the same formula, which is product of a reactant, okay, reaction quotient is also product of a reactant raised by the power of its stoichiometry. So concentration of product now, this is the product, is 3.7. So 3.7 and this one is 2.3. Okay, 2.3. So if we calculate this one, okay, let me use my calculator. So 3.7 divide 2.3. So it is 1.6. Okay, 1.60. So the value that you can see here, 1.60, the Q here is not equal to K. Okay. Okay, Q here is not equal to K. Uh, so it means that when Q is not equal to K, we can determine that when Q is not equal to K, system is not at equilibrium. Okay. When Q equals to K, it means it is equilibrium, right? If you try to calculate a Q here. Okay, Q. You calculate Q here. Uh, so, Q here that you calculate will be equal to K. So, we know the system is at equilibrium. Okay. That is about uh, the Q and the K and also the graph, eh? Uh, the graph does not have to be this graph only. It can also be this kind of graph. Eh? Uh, 
let's say you start here uh, okay like this okay maybe this is b or like this this is a okay the same thing eh? concentration versus concentration versus time eh? or it can be like this okay this is okay this is b this is a okay so it, it can also be like this so there are three possible graph uh, for concentration versus time because different reaction we have different uh, different concentration at different time okay so it can be possibility for this three graph eh? we can have possible three graph okay so that is all for you to understand about this topic so good luck